Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a demonstration of my new track stack and bus structure that I use for mixing. Now, when I say new, it's not really that new. I've been doing this for a few years now. I've just yet to make a video on this topic. Um, but I have to admit, initially, when track stacks were introduced in, I believe it was Logic 10.2 way back when, I was kind of dismissive of them, but after I started using them, in particular summing stacks, I really started to love them, and at this point, I kind of can't live without them, and I love using them for mixing. They just make everything about signal routing for time-based effects and, st and creating stems and grouping instruments. They make all of that easier. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate everything that I do in terms of the setup and routing, and I'll explain the benefits as I go. Okay, so to start, I've got a song here. I've got three lead vocal tracks. I've got a, vo a verse and pre-chorus track, a chorus track, and then a bridge and breakdown track. Now, as you're mixing these vocals, you may think to yourself, okay, maybe this one needs a little more top end. One of them needs a maybe a little more uh, mid-range, or maybe I want a little less compression on this one. So you may have different settings on each of the lead vocal tracks. You may have different levels on each of the vocal tracks. And you may even have like a doubled chorus vocal or something where you have a, a doubled layer underneath it. So it's normal to want to split up your lead vocal on different tracks. But when a client comes back to you and says, hey, I want you to turn all of the lead vocals down a little bit or all of the lead vocals up a little bit, then you have to make three separate adjustments. And if you have automation on these tracks, then you're having to you know, fool around with the automation. So the first thing I usually do is I, I group things into like instruments. So lead vocals, backing uh, vocal stacks, drums. Uh, I've got keyboards down here, some synthesizers bass, a couple different bass tracks, and then some different effects for like crashes and, and different sound effects. So I've got everything grouped into uh, like instruments. And then, you know, I'll do, I'll do my first demo here on the lead vocal. I'll select all of the lead vocals, go up to track, create new track stack. I always use summing stacks for mixing. And what this does is it puts all of the lead vocals into sort of one folder but it's not just a folder, it's actually a summing stack. The three tracks are being summed together on bus one into this summing stack. So again, if the artist uh, who I'm mixing for says, hey, I want you to pull all of the vocals up, I can do that, or pull all the vocals down, I can do that as well. And it'll affect the level of all three of these tracks, regardless of what automation is on these tracks. Now, it's not purely just an organizational thing, it also helps uh, group together uh, any time-based effects that I might use on these vocals. So what I'll typically do from here is I'll select all three of those vocals. I'll create a few uh, buses off of the sends here. I'll use bus two, bus three, and bus four. And you can either option click on these and you can uh, adjust uh, the actual uh, aux tracks or you can adjust the individual send levels for each of these, which typically I make the adjustments off of each of the sends rather than the aux tracks, unless I'm trying to, you know, maybe reduce all of the reverb on all of the lead vocals. That would be a situation where I mess with the, the aux track instead. But where are the aux tracks that it creates? Well, by default, they're all the way over here. And so what I like to do is I take these aux tracks, I select them. You can see their assignments, bus two, three, and four here and their output is going to the stereo output. I want these to go to the same track stack as my lead vocals. So what I do is I right click or control click up here and I select create track or you can press con uh, control T. And what this will do is it'll automatically push these aux tracks up into the tracks area. It will often uh, also put them automatically in the track stack because now you can see that uh, the output of all the aux tracks is going into the same track stack. Now, if it doesn't do that automatically, uh, what you can do is just simply drag these tracks into the track stack somewhere. You have to kind of drag them in somewhere above the bottom track, and then you can just reorganize them like so. So this little border here on the left is showing you that these three aux tracks are now inside of the track stack. So this single stack contains all of the lead vocals plus any time-based effects I might add on these aux tracks. So let's um, let's assign some effects. So let's, let's make this one reverb. Let's make this one like a slap delay. 
and let's make this one like a modulation effect, like the, a thickening effect. So let's start with the reverb here. This is the ROM reverb from Native Instruments. I love this on, on sort of more ambient, uh, sort of breathy, airy vocals. Uh, but you can use all stock plugins if you want to. The, uh, the concept is the same. Um, because the reverb is on an aux track, there's no need to have any of the dry signal in here. So I'll set this to 100% wet. You can't break free. Just right there in your frozen state. You've broken down. And now let's say, okay, in the verses, I want a lot less reverb. And in the bridge, I want a lot less reverb. But in the chorus, I want a lot of reverb. So separating things by the sends here allows you to send different amounts of each track to the reverb. Give it time. What's another year, another life? Tell me now under the setting sun. Okay, and then let's say I want to add like a bit of like a slapback delay just to sort of thicken things. Uh, on my next aux track here, I'll just add the tape delay. I'll just choose one of the slap presets here. And again, dry signal can be zero. And maybe I don't want a whole lot of slap on the verse or the bridge. But again, maybe I want more of this on the chorus. Just take it slow. Give it time. What's another year, another life? And then maybe I want a thickening modulation effect. You could use one of Logic's modulation effects. My favorite one as of late is the Howard Benson vocal multiplier. This plugin is so big it doesn't fit on the screen. Um, but uh, I'll just choose one of these uh, um, doubling effects here. And again, I can mute the input signal because I don't want to hear the dry signal coming through the aux track. So this is just going to be the thickening effect separated onto its own track. Tell me now under the setting sun. Now I could pull these sends down, but again, I probably want a little bit more on the chorus than I do on the verse. And if you send the mix over to your client and the client says, hey, I want a little... Uh, more of the delay and a little less modulation overall, then you can just come over here and you can make those adjustments here instead of having to uh, adjust all of the buses. But then if, they're, if they say, okay, I want a little less modulation just on the verse, then you can just pull down that send. So I've got all of my dry signal here on these three tracks, all of my wet signal here on these three tracks, and then I have all of this going into a lead vocal summing stack. You've got it all, but you can't break free. Just sleep right there in your frozen state. You've broken down, but it won't break me. I'm here for you. I feel for you, darling. When we tear down all these walls. And let's say, again, if I add some automation to one of these tracks, like I want the volume a little louder here at the beginning. If the client comes back to you and says, okay, I want all of the lead vocals to come down a notch. You don't have to come in here and adjust the automation. You don't have to worry about uh, using the absolute versus relative modes. The relative mode will let you make relative adjustments. What you can do is just pull down all of the lead vocals here. Um, now, if they want an individual vocal pulled down in the mix and you still have automation, typically what I'll do is I'll just add the gain plugin and I'll add like a bit of a trim. Now, as long as you're using post pan or post fader, uh, any volume adjustments you make to the track will also uh, have an effect on the amount of reverb that you hear on that track. But I just wanted to make that that quick distinction there. Now, you may be thinking, OK, what if I want to apply some maybe some bus compression to multiple vocals, but I don't want the bus compression to be on the time-based effects. I just want it to be on the dry signal. So this is a perfect example here uh, for my um, big group backing vocals here. So I'm just gonna select all of these. That's like 16, 15, is that 15? Yeah, 15 channels of backing uh, vocals. I'll select all of those. Let's add those to a track stack or a summing stack. And I'll just call this uh, backing backing vocals, if I can spell right. There we go. 
Now all of those are grouped together and I can do the same thing. I can create multiple aux tracks for my time-based effects and feed just the backing vocals into those time-based effects. I'm never gonna let you fall. I'm never gonna let you fade. I'm never gonna let you fall. I'm never gonna let you fade. Even if we lose it all. Now, because this time the aux tracks are not inside of the summing stack, I can also use this to add bus processing to just the dry signal of the backing vocals. Okay, so here I'm using the UAD API bus compressor to compress all of the vocals. I'm just gonna sort of blend this in. I'm never gonna let you fall. I'm never gonna let you fade. Even if we lose it all, it's just more time to waste. But again, I'm able to add this bus compression on just the dry signal. Now, when I bring in the two time-based effects, these are gonna play through these aux tracks, but right now they're still going to the stereo output. They're not going to the track stack. I'm never gonna let you fall. I'm never gonna let you fade. Even if we lose it all. Or maybe I want like a, a de -esser or something on there. I'm never gonna let you fall. I'm never gonna let you fade. Even if we lose it all. So I can bus process all these vocals together just using two, uh, you know, like one compressor and one de -esser rather than doing it individually for each one of these. But now what I want to do is I still want uh, a grouped vocal where I can just press one button and it, it gives me all of the backing vocals with their time-based effects. So what I can do at this point is I can select the backing vocal summing stack and then I can also select the two aux tracks and let's create another track stack. So we're creating a summing stack inside of a summing stack. And so this will just be backing vocals all. There we go. So again, if I open this up, it's a track stack with two time-based effects. Open that up, and that brings out all of the individual channels. So this separates the dry signal stack from the full stack, which has the time-based effects in it. And if I want to hear everything with the time-based effects in, I just select uh, the solo button there, and I can play those back. I'm never gonna let you fall, I'm never gonna let you fade, even if we lose it all. And again, this gives me control over that entire uh, group of instruments. So if the client wants all of the backing vocals down or up, I can do that. If they say, you know what, I want the backing vocals a little brighter, I can add the EQ here on the dry channel rather than the, the main uh, summing stack channel. So then what you can do is you can just mix your whole song and continue grouping together like instruments, your drums, your guitars, all of the keyboards, all of the synths, all of the effects, etc. Just keep using this same technique for each group of instruments and each group of instruments will then have its own set of time-based effects and bus processing. So here in my project, I've taken 53 total channels and grouped them down to seven distinct summing stacks or seven distinct stems, each with their own processing. More and more often these days, my clients are asking me for mix stems, and it's not because they don't trust my mixing, it's just, like, I get it, you want to have uh, some sort of source separation uh, copy of your song for later. You need an acapella, uh, you know, to do a remix, or maybe you want an instrumental version for karaoke, or, you know, maybe you need some stems for live performance where the live sound engineer is mixing the stems together and then you're singing over it. So there are a lot of applications for wanting stems, but because each of the time-based effects in each of these track stacks are separated, all I have to do to create stems is mute all of the other tracks and then just hit Command B, bounce that track, and that'll give me a lead vocal stem with all of the individual track processing and all of the time-based effects for all of the lead vocals. And then I'll just move to the next one. I bounce another version of the backing vocals, and this will contain all of the backing vocals, all of their processing, all of their dry bus processing, and all of their time-based effects. And then you can just continue on down the line until you've exported seven stereo uh, wave files as stems. Um, if you're working on a big project 
where there's a lot of different instrumentation from song to song, but it's like an album or an EP. I also find this helpful because I can export each of my mixed stems, bring all of the, uh, the songs together with their stems, and then I can very quickly A, B the drum stem on one song with the drum stem on another, or the vocal stem on one song with the vocal stem on another, and I can do like a stem master for the final step instead of uh, uh, doing everything in individual uh, logic projects. It's sort of like a, almost like a pre-mastering process just to make sure that in, in terms of consistency and tone quality, uh, there aren't these like huge shifts from song to song. Like generally speaking, I like the drum, like the impact and volume of the drums, bass and vocals to be kind of the same from song to song if I'm releasing an EP or an, an album. So, okay, so that is my new... Uh, track stack, summing stack, and bus structure uh, I use for mixing. Um, again, I'm not telling you what to do here. This is just what I like to do. Try it out in your own mixes. If you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.